What did you mean back there, Meg? About how you found it? Nothing. It's just my nerves talking. There's something I should know about this place, about Sarif. Megan! Hold on. Deus Ex Human Revolution is really one of the best games we got in recent years. As a sort of prequel to the events in the first Deus Ex, it explores the themes of augmentation a lot deeper than the original game. It was developed for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in 2011, with the Director's Cut released two years later. These two versions have some pretty noteworthy differences aside from the storyline which is by and large the same. Well, looky here. We got us a Boy Scout. In both versions, you play the role of an ex-SWAT commander named Adam Jensen, working for Sarif Industries as their security chief. Sarif Industries is a large manufacturer of augmentations and develops technology for military and philanthropic needs. In the game's incredibly badass opening, Sarif Industries is attacked by a group called the Tyrants. Adam's girlfriend Megan is kidnapped and he's beaten to within an inch of his life. During what is probably one of my favourite opening cinematics of all time, we see him getting rebuilt after he's given augmentations from Sarif Industries. It's not something he chose or was even fully aware of, and this game initially tackles Adam coming to grips with his newfound abilities, before throwing this to the wayside and focusing on a larger plot. What ensues is a very engaging campaign with numerous side missions to complete, as you track down the people responsible for the attack. You'll be engaged in philosophical and political discussions with numerous characters, all of whom can be swayed towards your point of view if you choose the right dialogue options. Your actions throughout the game can directly result in the death of certain characters, and there's a few pivotal moments where their fate is left entirely in your hands. You want to fix everything right away. You want it so much you start trying too hard. Trust me, if you deal with the smaller, easier stuff first, the big things don't look so big. Across the board, the voice acting is pretty damn stellar. In fact, the presentation in general is just superb. Yes, the game has a urine colored filter, but I really enjoyed the art style of everything. It's like this classical futuristic vibe with gorgeous architecture and lots of contemporary looking objects. Character models look good, the soundtrack is atmospheric and action packed at all the right times, and the engine runs like grease lightning with practically no frame rate drops and brisk loading screens. Despite being developed for consoles, this is still developed with PC gamers in mind, allowing for quick saves and a control scheme that doesn't feel like it's been prioritized for a controller. The soundtrack has been composed by Michael McCann and it kind of does its own thing, but if you listen closely, you'll also hear a few motifs recycled from the first game. He's done a great job overall and all of the various hubs and environments in the game are defined by their own unique tracks. Help me. Now, this is a game that's often called an RPG, though it's really more of an action game with RPG elements. After Adam is rebuilt in the prologue, you're able to earn your abilities and skills through Praxis Kits. You find these Praxis Kits in the environment, similar to Biomod Canisters in Invisible War, or you earn a single one each time you reach a certain amount of experience points. These are Adam's base abilities in the game, and most of them are genuinely enjoyable and fun to use. Things like upgrading your legs for faster movement speeds and a higher jump height, or increasing your battery power so you can knock out two enemies in a single takedown. Then there's the other passive but still useful abilities like increased resistance to damage or immunity to gas or electromagnetic explosions. Probably the most useful is the cloak which renders you invisible at high energy cost and the hacking ability which when fully upgraded allows you to access every single computer system you come across, often granting you huge chunks of experience points in the process. Access granted. The augmentation system is something that directly feeds into the core gameplay because almost every single action in the game earns you experience points, from killing or knocking out enemies to interactions with NPCs. The game swings heavily towards pacifism as a more rewarding style of gameplay and you can earn I think upwards of two or three times the amount of experience from simply knocking someone out, as opposed to blowing their head off with a revolver. It's funny how the game was so heavily marketed in the trailers and gameplay footage showing Adam being this sort of relentless killing machine breaking down walls and snapping necks. But instead, you'll quickly learn in-game that avoiding most enemies is actually a more sensible way to play the game. As a rule, it seems that non-lethal weapons generally attract the least attention, though you've got less options in that regard. You're either using a stun gun or a tranquilizer rifle. And like any good stealth game, after you've knocked someone out, you can drag their body into a nearby corner so people don't walk over the top of them and trip off an alarm. Combat isn't bad, but it's just that ammunition and healing items are generally quite hard to come by, and if you're alerting one enemy, you're often alerting his five other buddies as well, so getting into large-scale gunfights can become problematic. 
That's not to say the game doesn't accommodate a more aggressive playstyle. You get miniguns, shotguns, and rocket launchers, but again, it's just often more straining on resources to go guns blazing, and also less rewarding in terms of the experience you gain from it. Even a few key moments where it seems like you're being forced into combat, you can often sneak out the back door or avoid enemies entirely if you use a more subtle approach. On that note, the stealth in Human Revolution is pretty basic stuff, but not in a bad way. Enemies generally work off a line of sight mechanic, depending on the distance you are from them. Running and sprinting seems to garner the most noise and attention, though crouching makes you all but silent, and your movement speed is still quick enough in this stance that you can easily get behind someone quickly and take them down without much of a fuss. You're able to snap to cover with the press of the right mouse button and the camera zooms out to a third person perspective so you can get a good idea of your surroundings. With the press of the spacebar, you can leap from cover to cover when people have their back turned and it's fluid and responsive, even if it is a little bit contrived how crates and barrels always seem to be placed in a way that facilitates this mechanic. Enemies will either be unaware of your presence, alerted to you in some way, or hostile, where they'll fire on your last known position and attract the attention of every asshole in the near vicinity. Adam has a takedown move which is utterly badass where he literally just beats the shit out of someone and knocks them out cold. You can upgrade this as I mentioned to take out two guys at once as well which is just awesome. On the highest difficulty the stealth is really challenging but rewarding with enemies having realistic awareness that extends through to their peripheral vision. In fact on the highest difficulty you're all but forced into stealth as Adam can only survive a peppering a gunfire before buying the farm. Now what I see is the only real major issue with Human Revolution is the boss fights. Now someone really shit the bed with this for the simple reason that you're forced into fighting these comic book style super villains. In the first game you could get through the whole thing without firing a single shot, but now in Human Revolution you're forced into combat with these over the top, larger than life bad guys who have guns coming out of their arms and jump around like acrobats. The director's cut did address this somewhat by giving you a few more options to take them out other than engaging them head on, but you're still forced into fighting them which is a bit of a shame and it fills out a place with the rest of the game. The other ways that the director's cut mode differs is with these updated visuals and the inclusion of the DLC, The Missing Link, as a mandatory segment of the campaign. The Missing Link occurs in the campaign literally right near the end when you're on a tanker heading for the final area in the game. At this point, you're discovered as a stowaway and come up against an entirely new faction with their own agendas and storyline. All of your augmentations and weapons are taken away from you and you're thrown back to square one, temporarily anyway. Now to me, this is like watching Empire Strikes Back and then before you can watch Return of the Jedi, you first have to sit through a Star Wars fan film. Just after you finish watching Luke Skywalker fighting Darth Vader at Bespin, you have to watch two fat guys in bathrobes swing poorly rendered lightsabers at each other. The Missing Link isn't bad, I mean it worked as a standalone experience, but when it's thrown into the overall campaign, it just drags everything down in more ways than one, and it's the sole reason why I do not recommend playing the Director's Cut. Otherwise, the base game has an incredible amount of polish and offers up the freedom to approaching any current objective with detailed environments to explore. It tackles mature themes like corruption, poverty, genocide, and it never seems to feel forced or contrived. Perhaps it's best that you came to me rather than bringing this recording to the police. You need it to be some kind of proof because you're still suffering. And it's got a good length to it. I think the first time I ever played through the campaign, it probably took me a good 20 or so hours, if not more, after which all I wanted to do was load up an entirely new game and have another go at it. I can understand the negativity towards Invisible War, but I think Human Revolution is a fantastic game that does the series justice. It does casualize certain elements, but not to the point of dumbing the game down, and on the highest difficulty, it's a challenging and satisfying game to play.